Hello everyone. This is lecture three, and lecture lecture three will have two parts. This is first part, part one, and lecture three will cover quiz three. This lecture is about basic set theory. What is a set? We may think of set as a container, and all the members inside a set. Is the element inside the container? For example, we can have a box and all different different kinds of balls are inside the box, and we have a set. There are some specific ways to notate a set. Okay, here we have two examples. We have set A and set B. A is a set containing one, two, three, four, five, five numbers, and B is a set, and the member of this set are all the students taking Ling one, two, three now, and there are some convention notation. First one is. The name of the set is the name of the set is represented by capital letters, and there is an equal sign followed by、uh, there is an equal sign following the capital letter, the name of the set, and we have curly brackets, and all the members are listed inside the curly bracket, and we use comma to separate each member. So、uh, there are three ways to define a set. We just saw the first way, which is enumeration. The name of the set equal sign followed by a curly bracket, a pair of curly bracket, and all the members are inside the curly brackets. Okay, it's the first one. And we have two more ways to define a set. We have description and recursive definition. Take a look at description first. So if we want, if we try to define this, a set, this、uh, if we try to define set A. In addition to enumerate enumeration, we can use description. We have a name of the set equal sign and a pair of curly brackets. And、we have some something new now. We have a placeholder x.、Um, this x is a variable, and then we have a vertical bar, and then a description about this variable. So, if x vertical bar x is an integer between one and five, and notice that this these two things are just notational different difference. These two thing. Denote to the same set. So、um, this is just the example we are talking about. Another example. So we have enumeration. We list all the mem all the students who is taking in one two three now.、And、we can denote the same set by using the description B equal sign curly bracket X. The place of the vertical bar, and the description about this x. X is a student taking in one two three now. These two things are identical. And the third way to define a set is use recursive definition. This one is much,、uh, a little bit more complex. Complex. Okay. So first of, um, first of all, we are going to define the basic case. You、we'll、say one. For example, we try to define all the positive integers, the set of all the positive integers. So、uh, we can define the first case now. First case, one is a positive integer. This is a base base case. And then we are going to use a recursive rule, defining defining new members in terms of elements we already know are members. So we can say. 
if n is a positive positive integer, then so n plus one, and so is n plus one. So, uh, this n the first n will be one, and then we know one plus one is two, then two is a positive integer, and it goes on two is a positive integer, and two plus one three is a positive integer as well. It goes on and on so that we can define all the positive integer. And the third clause is bounding clause, limiting membership to the elements accommodated by the other two clauses. Actually, we can implement this recursive definition in Prolog fairly easily. Okay, we have a basic case. Base case one is a positive integer. We can use a a prolog sentence to represent this idea. Positive integer one. One one is a positive integer. Okay. And then we are going to implement this recursive rule. So um we can say m plus one is a positive integer if n is a positive integer. So n plus one x plus one is a positive integer if x is a positive integer and the relationship between x and x plus 1 is in this, in this one x plus 1 is x plus 1 and we use this is a recursive rule in prolog and this is a base, base case in this manner we can define all the positive integers And there are some property properties of set. The first one is a, a, a member inside a set is not ordered. So this we can A B is equivalent to B A because the order of the members is the the order the order of the members doesn't matter. Okay. And each member inside the set is unique. There is no reduplicated members. There are no reduplicated members in the set. So if we write down A A B this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. We should have A B instead. And also, we can define the size of the set. The, the size of the set is defined by how many members inside the set. So, and we use two vertical bar to denote the size of the set. So, if AB vertical bar, and this would be two because there are two members inside this set. And the first, this uh, okay. And then this interesting case. What is an empty set? Recall that we just said that a set is like a container with elements inside the container. However, we can have a bare container without any elements inside. So, this type of stuff is empty set. And there are two ways to two ways to represent empty set. You just have a curly bracket without anything between them or you can have you can use this symbol so actually you can see we can see we can uh, you can see how many members are inside the set using the vertical bar so you have vertical bar with uh, if you have empty set the size of an empty, empty set is zero these two things are identical and this case is much more interesting if we have a set containing an empty set this uh, we can have we can use this symbol to represent this concept or this one a curly bracket containing containing this guy then the size of this or this 
is not zero. Instead, we have one, because there is a member inside this set, even though the member is an empty set. The final one, universal set. Universal set is denoted by U, a capital U. This is the set that contains all elements of the universe. Okay, this is the part one of basic set theory.